The Nintendo Switch is known for having incredible single player titles like The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, and more. But when it comes to multiplayer, the big N is no slouch. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the top 25 best Nintendo Switch multiplayer games. Now, this is not to be confused with the best online multiplayer. It's just best multiplayer outright. So it's a combination of local and or online and the quality of the game itself and just my own personal taste. So there's going to be a lot of games that are playing right now in the footage that maybe don't make it to my list, but are also great multiplayer experiences. So if there's anything that I missed or something that you feel is better, that's why I want all of you right now to drop a comment in the comment section about your favorite multiplayer games while you watch this video. But before we get into the list, what's good everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, and click that notification bell to get the best Nintendo Switch RPG news, live streams, reactions, and more as soon as they drop. Now let's go ahead and jump right into number 25, and we're starting out with a classic that I played back in the day, and they brought it back, and that is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. So this is a super high-end remaster slash remake of the original Tony Hawk game and Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. And I grew up in that era when those games were first coming out. And I can tell you right now, there was no bigger boost to the skate life, to the skate atmosphere than what Tony Hawk did. And these games were incredible back in the day. They were incredible local multiplayer games, but now with the newer technology and on the Nintendo Switch and other platforms, you can play them online with your friends at any point. You have local wireless play. It's really cool to see what they've done with the skate parks and the point challenges and the trick contests and all the different things that we kind of wanted back then, but online just wasn't advanced enough on the original PlayStation and N64 for these games. So it was really cool to see Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 come back with a full suite of great online options, multiplayer for you and your friends, local wireless play, and so much more. So that's why Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 plus 2 makes the number 25 on the list. Number 24, Dragon Ball Fighters. Now this game would be even higher on the list if they decided to do the rollback netcode that is in beta for, I think, Xbox, PlayStation, and PC right now, or definitely at least PC, but it's coming to those platforms, unfortunately not to the Nintendo Switch, but that doesn't mean this isn't one of the best, or if not the best, anime fighting game of all time. It's got a serious tone when it comes to the competitive aspect. Controls, Arc System Works is a master at this. And the controls, the gameplay, the online, the features, pretty much everything on Xbox and PlayStation, minus the upcoming rollback netcode, is intact on Dragon Ball Fighters. So it's still a fantastic multiplayer experience where you can pick your favorite Z Fighters or you can just go down with your favorite Goku and play your friends locally and online. It's great for that. And they've got a bunch of other modes and different cool things to do as well. It's a complete multiplayer package when it comes down to it. And I really enjoyed playing it for the bit that I played it because I don't play fighting games for long periods of time outside of some of the other ones that we're gonna talk about here. But from everything that I saw that it offers and from what I've played, when it comes to Nintendo Switch, it is a very impressive traditional fighting game. So Dragon Ball Fighters makes it the number 24 on the list. Number 23, Animal Crossing New Horizons. And if the online wasn't so I would say wonky in this game, it might be higher. I was contemplating not even having it on the list, and I'm pretty sure there are other online multiplayer games that are better, like Fortnite or something like that, right? A lot of you guys probably have stuff, but this is just what I have played and what I personally like in terms of it. And Animal Crossing, when you do get everybody together, when it actually works, when you actually have things to do, it's actually pretty fun. You know, it's one of those things where you can get people together in the COVID time period. I've never played Animal Crossing more 
than in that time period. And I think that this game, Animal Crossing, with its online multiplayer components, shows how valuable that that type of thing can be because I never really played online in Animal Crossing. They'd had it before in previous games, I think like City Folk and Wide World and some of the other games. And I never really played the online, but this was the first time and it was solid from what I saw. You can do different fishing competitions. You can go hang out, show people stuff. You can trade certain items. You can go collect on their islands. You can go to different places. I mean, it's pretty cool in terms of what they were able to do with the online in the game. It's just a little wonky in terms of people showing up and everybody getting an announcement. If it was more seamless, I would have probably put it up higher on the list. And if you can actually do more events and more things and have more competitions and have like rankings and all that, then I think that it would have been higher. But for what it does offer in that COVID time period back in 2020, it was invaluable and it showed just how good and just how fun Animal Crossing Online can be. So that's why Animal Crossing New Horizons makes it the number 23 on the list. Number 22, Borderlands Legendary Collection. Okay, you want a action-packed first-person shooter multiplayer experience? You've got it here in droves. And I have this over Borderlands 3 because Borderlands 3 only does two-player local and online co-op, whereas the Legendary Collection does four-player, and it's a really good game. I think that some of the simplistic things in the game, some of the faults, some of the non-quality of life stuff that the newer games, or at least Borderlands 3 has, isn't always here in 1 and 2, but still, I think that these games are still phenomenal play online. If you've got a friend or two or three or four, because it's up to four players, you can have a ton of fun. It's seamless drop-in, drop-out co-op, and the world actually changes in terms of the difficulty when you add more players in. So it's a bit more dynamic in that sense, which is why I wanted to include it in this list. You can also have duels as well. So there's also a PVP aspect of it. So if you ever wanted to fight with your friends using all different types of crazy guns, you can do it. These are underrated multiplayer experiences, even on Xbox and PlayStation to a degree. And on the Nintendo Switch, I barely know anybody that was even talking about it. But if you do take the time to invest with you and some friends and Borderlands 1 and 2, and specifically Borderlands 2 4 players, I think that it's a great experience to be had on the Nintendo Switch, and it's really fun overall. So Borderlands Legendary Collection makes it to number 22 on the list number 21 donkey kong country tropical freeze and yes this is no online multiplayer in this one it's just local but remember what i said the quality of the game plus what you can do multiplayer even if it's local this is still a blast i actually tested this out not too long ago when i just wanted to see exactly the features with donkey kong country tropical freeze i was looking at maybe doing an in-depth retrospective or video i ended up playing some co-op with a buddy and it is fun it's still fun especially considering the difficulty in the levels i think that's what really makes the co-op something to where you can get latched and attached to with someone that's in depth or experienced now obviously if it's a younger player you're going to have to do certain things to make sure that uh, that younger player is protected when it comes down to it but if you've got experienced players if you've got a friend that wants to get better or is good at platforming this is a really fun game to play just to see how you're going to navigate the world and how the co-op works and everything it's really good the local multiplayer in the game is actually expanded a bit because you have different characters in there so even if someone is more of a noob or a smaller player with funky kong in there and with cranky kong you have characters that are a bit easier for people to pick up and play so it becomes something that you can play with a smaller child at times and you can still play if you want to go hard mode with the characters in the game dixie's a bit easier you have diddy that's easier than donkey kong's definitely hard mode overall so so I have to give, despite there not being online, despite there not being a ton of features with it, I still think Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is one of the best multiplayer experiences on the Nintendo Switch. Number 20, Rayman Legends Definitive Edition. Now, this edition isn't quite so definitive when it comes to how it runs or the loading times or certain things, but the multiplayer is still intact and still really good. If you have not played Rayman Legends with friends, next time that you're at a get-together, a party, you're with your friends playing a LAN party, whatever the case is, just say, hey, let's bust out some Rayman Legends local co-op 
turn it on and have fun in the music stages and different stuff man it is super good plus there's other little mini games in there as well like the kung fu uh, soccer game that they have in there and all sorts of stuff like it really is a great multiplayer experience a very fun multiplayer experience that i think actually tracks the characters and the camera and everything a bit better than even nintendo's titles at times which we are going to get into some of those so for me rayman legends with its supreme controls great smooth jump in jump out local multiplayer fantastic level design great intuitive way of doing multiplayer i think it absolutely deserves its number 20 spot on the list number 19 streets of rage 4 this is a phenomenal old school throwback beat em up just like we had them back in the day local co-op with your friends but with a new twist online is now in and the online is surprisingly well done there isn't a lot of lag there aren't a lot of issues with this this game was kind of delayed and it had some issues coming out but i think it's because they were trying to make sure that the online and the multiplayer and everything associated worked really well and i love when we see these old school throwback beat-em-ups double dragon turtles whatever the case is come back and then they also go a little bit the extra mile when it comes to the online multiplayer when it comes to different characters and powers and that's why this game actually makes it on the list for me is because not only does it have the local and awesome co-op that you can play with you and your friends but then it also has the online that's well done and why I put it over a lot of other games that are out there for the Nintendo Switch I love how you can kind of drop in drop out you have challenges for co-op or not so the game recognizes in terms of when you're playing multiplayer and different things and different stuff to do so that's always good when it does that instead of seeing the mode as more of a throwaway it's more of something that they want you to actively engage in so streets of rage 4 one of the best beat-em-ups on the nintendo switch and absolutely one of the best multiplayer experiences for the platform number 18 doom 2016 so this was one of the games that released in the first year of the nintendo switch it was actually within the first year back in 2017 that caught people completely off guard because this was a big playstation 4 and xbox one game there was no ps3 or xbox 360 version yet there was a nintendo switch version of this game running portably be it that on a low powered tablet which was just wild and the online multiplayer for the most part with the exception of i think like a map editor everything from the xbox and playstation version was all there it was all there complete intact with all of the different fragging with the guns with the maps with the levels and of course not quite at the 60 frames per second not at 30 frames but it still worked decently for what the nintendo switch is and it kind of just blew me away it was the first time that i really got into an online shooter in a while i kind of stopped after call of duty modern warfare 2 and didn't play too many too much but i actually played a ton of doom 2016 on the nintendo switch because of all the different options that it had because of its impressive netcode and overall how it played it was very good especially for one of those early nintendo switch shooters one of those early nintendo switch impossible ports so with all of that i have to give it to number 18 on the list number 17 luigi's mansion 3 a very surprising game on this list to me because luigi's mansion 3 isn't seen as a multiplayer experience but it's got a sweet a surprising depth of multiplayer madness in here you have completely separate local multiplayer from online multiplayer so they could have just copied the experience for online the same as local but they didn't local multiplayer gives you a bunch of different style of mini games that clearly where you're all sharing a screen so where the games are actually cognizant of that and then the online multiplayer gets you a whole ghost tower mode where clearly you're going to have your own screen you're going to be in different sections you're not going to be able to see your partners you're going to have to run over there and save them and do different things and knock out ghosts and solve puzzles inside these towers and keep on going higher up i was really surprised when i saw this depth when it comes to the multiplayer and how they split it up and the amount of content because luigi's mansion's always been seen as a single player experience and yes dark moon did have multiplayer but it was nowhere near in depth and there wasn't as much content as they did with luigi's mansion 3 so 
Very surprised by it, surprised by the quality, surprised by how much content there was. And even though Luigi's Mansion 3 is multiple years old now at this point, there are still people that play the local multiplayer and online. You can go online and catch games in Luigi's Mansion 3. So that's definitely good to see and why it makes the number 17 on my list. Number 16, Mortal Kombat 11. A very interesting title for the Nintendo Switch once again, because this was one of those earlier impossible ports right this is a 2019 game it's a big triple a third party fighting game mortal kombat ed boon nether realm they're known for that but they're also known for bringing some of their titles to nintendo switch when they could they brought over injustice to the wii u so having mortal kombat 11 i think gave them in terms of who to work with and what to do and what's going on gave them a little bit of a head start when it comes down to it and it turned out fairly well now the single player crypt mode is not very good at all but the multiplayer in terms of netcode and overall performance is solid on the nintendo switch maybe not quite as good as the other platforms but you can still go on to this day go check out mortal kombat 11 on the nintendo switch you can get the deluxe edition with all the different characters and there are people online playing so i think things might run a little bit smoother even now at this point than when i was playing it in its heyday when there was a lot more people playing mortal kombat 11 also offers some great local options as well to play with your friends and family well maybe not too young of family but i played mortal kombat back in the day when i was younger so it depends on what you want to play with your kids or your nephews or your age or however you want to deal with that but overall mortal kombat still offers those suite of options it's still just as good as it's always been i think that's even better in some regards when it comes to the online multiplayer and still to this day i think that mortal kombat 11 might be the best western third party fighting game on the nintendo switch there aren't many to be honest but this is probably the best one when it comes to netcode when it comes to online when it comes to features when it comes to all the different multiplayer suite that you want with a fighting game mortal kombat 11 has that unlike Mortal Kombat 1 on the Nintendo Switch, but they're trying to fix it up. We'll see what they do with that one. All right, let's get to the next block here, guys. Number 15 is Wargroove 1 plus 2. They don't really come in a package, or at least I don't know if they come in a package, but I'm putting them together because they're both essentially the same game. One of them is the sequel follow-up, but Wargroove 2 has way more features, way more options, way more units, better online play, more things that you can do, more features as well. So it's pretty cool in terms of like the map editor and the different combat that you can do against other people. And it's all right there on Nintendo Switch. People kind of sleep on Wargroove as a competitive game just because they kind of see it more as the single player experience, like the Advance War slash Fire Emblem. But the online is in depth as well. I played Wargroove 1 quite a bit online and Wargroove 2, I haven't been able to play it as much, but I've checked out the features and seen what it can do. And it's really good. So I'm guessing world group one is good world group two definitely is awesome i want to get back into it though because if you're into advanced wars or fire emblem or tactics ogre games like that the war group one and two are absolutely for you and you could probably have some fun if you're good at those games going online and beating people in ranked matches and all of that all right not straying too far away at number 14 advanced wars one plus two this is one of my favorite remakes or remasters or super remasters whatever you want to call it of all time because they took two great games, put them together, added a bunch of features that people had wanted in those games originally with the online and with the cool map editor and all these different things that you can do to share levels and play online with your friends, co-op, different things. It's all there now, which is really good. Advance Wars is still just as fun as ever. You got a bunch of great units. You got clean graphics. You got fun gameplay and overall everything runs really smooth on the online way forward did a phenomenal job in terms of adapting these game boy advance games and having them retain their flair retain what they do but then also add in kind of a little bit extra right it looks like a gba game but obviously not the same as a gba game but it looks like that style and i think that it retains it very well for smooth play online it's a lot less complex so when you're playing a strategy game like this and you're doing different different type of things everything's running 
pretty good. So Advance Wars 1 plus 2 with all of its new multiplayer options that you can do with your friends and online with the competitive. That's why it made the number 14 on my list. Number 13, Super Mario Maker 2. And this game is interesting because you have the local multiplayer, right? And which is awesome. That's really good. You have the online multiplayer to where you can play with your friends. You have races, you have different levels that you can do. But I think that the biggest aspect of this game, the biggest thing that still makes it to be one of the best multiplayer games even though i'm not as big on super mario maker as others the fact that you have that custom editor and that you can go on there and get levels at any point and download them and play there was a time that i did do that and it's really cool especially with all this different stuff that people are making i think that you really can't take that for granted considering people have made whole worlds whole new games in super mario maker 2 that is a fantastic option so this pick for me is a little bit of a blend of of course what i played i do like 2d mario games i do like all of that but also what the potential and some of the things that i did experience before i stopped playing it was just incredible and i actually even went back to it just a bit to test out somebody's whole new game that they made within super mario maker 2 that i posted on twitter and i'm just like Wow, like they really made all of this in the game. There are some rough edges overall, but I think that if you look at everything that Super Mario Maker 2 offers from a multiplayer, local, and online level, it's really good. Even if you're talking about, hey, sitting down with your son or your daughter or your cousin or your nephew or your friend and you guys building a level together that is even an aspect of multiplayer in some type of way so i do think that super mario maker 2 does a phenomenal job at that coming in at number 12 monster hunter stories 2 wings of ruin probably a surprising spot for many of you guys but the online co-op and the competitive in this game is really good and it's a shame that more people didn't play and it didn't take off as much because i think that if you look at everything that monster hunter stories 2 wings of ruin offers from a multiplayer standpoint it's got the competitive modes in there it's got to where you can go head-to-head -head battle you can breed your type of monster you can pick out different tactics and attributes and you can fight against other people in addition to having co-op missions that get progressively harder and harder there's a substantial amount of online content in there for co-op players in addition to people trying Trying to play against others in battles and ranked unranked so to me monster Hunter stories 2 is one of the best multiplayer games on the nintendo switch and i love these type of games that have this in-depth single player experience that's awesome and you're going to be spending time you take your monsters and you take your customized items and go into online whether it's competitive or cooperative and have a bunch of other things to do very good game very good online multiplayer if you're looking for something that's kind of like pokemon and i think that you're going to have a ton of fun Monster to Stories 2, Wings of Ruin makes the number 12 on my list. All right, guys, so we have a little bit of a mistake here, but we're going to just go ahead and roll with it because we're already at this point. So we've got two number 11s, or more like 26 games on this list. But for the sake of this video, two number 11s, two different games. We got Cuphead coming in first, and then we'll talk about the other game in just a bit. But I love both of them. It was hard for me to decide. That's the reason why that I had them both at number 11. Cuphead is awesome. It doesn't have the online multiplayer, which is unfortunate. But the local multiplayer is so good because what does it do? We talked about this before in terms of the difficulty. Donkey Kong, right, adds that difficulty. So it's going to add a lot more cohesion or at least a lot more communication between you and who you're playing with. Cuphead has this awesome two-player mode where you can go in with the friend local multiplayer and just blast it up. It's a very difficult game, and with the new DLC, you get even more content than Delicious Last Course to play with you and your friends, and I highly suggest if you're hanging out with a buddy, if you have not played Cuphead yet, and you want to kind of be challenged, you guys want to burn some time, or you really just want to work on your communication skills, Cuphead is going to be one of those games that's going to force you to do that, considering all the different types of monsters, and enemy types and different things that happen you're going to have to communicate in order to blast through the game so it's something that i actually want to go through again i played it with my brother before in the past local co-op on a laggy tv while we were on vacation and we were still having fun despite the tv having crazy input delay and lag so it's something that i want to play again at some point because cuphead is awesome i've already played the game single player beat it it was awesome but the multiplayer in the game is so good so cuphead is one of the games on the other game is a beat-em-up teenage mutant ninja turtles shredders revenge this game is wild it's got like six players online i haven't done it yet i think the most i've ever done is like 
four or something like that but it's got a bunch of people that you can use online it's drop in drop out co-op it's got a bunch of incentives to go in pick different characters play through the game a million times because you can beat it like in an hour or something like that but the local co-op is drop in drop out you can get right into it you can get playing you can drop out if you need to go somewhere if you want to drop in online games you can host your own game as well so it's a great experience it's a lot of fun but i played these games growing up i always talked about it to my friends like hey you got to come over to the house but now you can play beat em ups anywhere most of these beat em ups that are coming out have online multiplayer where you can beat down a bunch of baddies anywhere in the world with your friends so it's pretty cool and it runs really good it's got those options shredder's revenge is a great online game local or online to play just because of all the different options that you have the different characters that you can use and there's even extra dlc for you to go in there and get some more content because the game's pretty short so teenage mutant ninja turtles shredder's revenge makes the number 11 at least tied on the list okay so i have to also add this in because this list is just getting crazy and crazier there's so many incredible games but arms on the nintendo switch has fantastic local and online play i was personally impressed with not only the rollback netcode and how smooth everything worked but also the game modes in the game you have like a volleyball game you have different types of variations of the arms battles that you can do you have these straight up one-on-ones you have the two-on-twos you have the three-on-ones there's different combinations and how they rotate you in the lobbies and how that works in like a party mode or party bash is really well done arms would probably be really higher on this list or I would have remembered it if they actually had more content in the game with more characters and supported it longer but even without that the game is still incredibly well done on the switch when it comes to online play and still to this day despite it launching within the first number of months on the Nintendo Switch, still one of the best online multiplayer experiences that you can have on the system. So if you're looking for a great local competitive or online game to play, ARMS still has people playing to this point and you can't really go wrong with it. All right, we're in the top 10 boys and girls. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury with the Nintendo Switch release of the game. They added in Bowser's Fury, which does give you co-op options, local co-op. It's not that great. It's almost like Super Mario Odyssey with Cappy and all that. But I think it's maybe a little bit better than the Cappy stuff. Actually, yes, it's better than the Cappy stuff. At least you have your own character that you're controlling with Bowser Jr. But with Super Mario 3D World, the base game, you actually get full online multiplayer this time. Local multiplayer was always great, ran smooth, everything was good, but you get online multiplayer. And I wouldn't say that it's bad, it's not incredible, but it's not bad. If everybody has good connections, you can play online and have some fun and try to fight for who has the crown and get all the different locations and do everything that you need to do if you're working cohesively and the camera's not too bad either so it does give you the suite of options it does give you local multiplayer that's fun it gives you online multiplayer it gives you local co-op in the separate dlc portion that they have in there as well and it gives you hosting you can go there host the game friends can jump in you can jump in somebody else's game as well and it's pretty seamless it's actually not too bad you can drop in drop out when it comes to the co-op so it's not like it completely stops the game it says all right somebody's coming in like animal crossing or something like that which is underrated when it comes to some of these games some games have to stop everything when somebody's coming into the game but super mario 3d world plus bowser's fairy does a really good job with the extra added online the locals already good plus the bowser's fairy co-op so it makes the number 10 on my list coming in at number nine is a surprise to me at least is super mario bros wonder and over the last week or so after playing super mario rpg i kind of got back to super mario bros wonder i got back to playing a little bit of co-op with some people as well and going a little bit more into the online play just testing things out and kind of seeing the dark souls mode and all that which is really funny some of the online stuff that you can do in the game and it's interesting because super mario wonder you don't expect it to be a good online experience just because 2d mario is almost never a good online experience based off of what nintendo's done with super mario maker in the past but super mario bros wonder is actually kind of fun online i think that it works really well to play with your friends do some speed races or challenges or even have like the whole standy thing that where you can put different stuff people can see what's going on there i think that they did the best that they could 
all things considered, considering how platformers are online and playing them, it can be a pain if anybody has a bad connection, completely throw things off, no matter how good you code. So to me, Super Mario Bros. Wonder did a phenomenal job navigating that. And of course, the local multiplayer is still intact. And I think that it's better, at least for me, it's better than sitting there and bumping around bumper cars into people like you did with New Super Mario Bros. and all those games. I like the fact that they don't have that into where everyone can just play the game and not worry about bumping into each other on all the different levels especially when they start getting tougher so i think that it's a better overall multiplayer experience and that's why it's number nine on my list coming in at number eight is pokemon scarlet and violet a game that i desperately wish ran better at least with the single player campaign so i could enjoy that more but the multiplayer in this game despite me not putting a ton of time into it the time that i have put into doing the terror raid battles when i was playing was fantastic that is an ingenious mechanic one of the best additions to pokemon when it comes to just being able to play single player you're just playing the game then all of a sudden you see oh my gosh there's this raid campaign you want to go inside there and fight and you can get rewards and get this cool new pokemon and everything that is awesome it's a seamless way to integrate single player and multiplayer it's fun because you can do it at your pace you can have people hop right in and with the amount of people that play pokemon it'll never be hard to actually find people to play if you want to play unranked battles against someone when it comes to one-on-one -on -one pokemon you can if you want to play different types of battles you want to play custom battles you can pokemon has so many multiplayer options in there they just need to sure up some of the other things but as a multiplayer game when it comes to the competitive pokemon the amount of pokemon the different options you can do it's really good and i think that the biggest thing here with this game is the fact that it still has that super competitive base of people that want to play online and how you want to raise your pokemon and all of that i do wish that the co-op was a bit better because obviously the game doesn't run as good so the co-op when you're playing right there in somebody's world is a bit janky they did improve it a bit but definitely not up to where it needs to be but even if you don't even include that you just include the terror raid battle battles and you include the online multiplayer Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is still one of the best out there and why so many people are still buying the game and playing it because of that competitive aspect because of what they've been able to add all the different Pokemon the terror raid battles and of course the shiny hunting and trying to show off to your friends it all kind of ties back together into the spirit of multiplayer and being there with your friends or playing with your friends or doing other stuff or showing off what you got there so Pokemon Scarlet and Violet makes the number eight on the list coming in at number seven is Rocket League believe it or not I used to play this game all the time on my nintendo switch and i think it's fantastic this really cool blend of like monster trucks racing and soccer all kind of put together caused the perfect storm to be one of the best multiplayer games on the nintendo switch hands down it's a fantastic experience it's a lot of fun the controls are a little bit weird to get a hold of at first but once you do you actually start doing some goals popping off some tricks doing some different things it's got so many options that at this point so many different truck combinations so many different things that you can do for customization different game modes in there rocket league is a blast at this point if you go back to it and i had a ton of fun when i was playing and i still think even to this day despite it not being at the height of its popularity that it was back in 2018 or 2019 and all that it's still one of the best multiplayer experiences out there with millions of people still playing the game all right coming in at number six is warframe a game that i could have had higher warframe gives you so many cool options for a great multiplayer experience heck you're going to have to do multiplayer if you really want to get the best Best gear take down the best raids take down the best bosses the biggest bosses and all that multiplayer is essential and the game's multiplayer is really good drop in drop out it's got communications got text got all different type of stuff that was somewhat lacking with the nintendo switch when it first came out i know they were trying to have workarounds and different things but i think at this point it's a really solid experience and even when i finished playing a number of years ago it was a very good game and honestly i really wish there was like a regular warframe game if they just made like a regular game and you had a single player campaign you had a regular co-op campaign with up to two players or maybe four players oh my goodness warframe might be my number one multiplayer game on the nintendo switch but even still obviously it's more of a games as a service type of game it's still incredibly 
good and a great multiplayer experience on the Nintendo Switch. One of the best big third party ports on the platform, hands down. And it's pretty much feature parity with the Xbox and PlayStation and PC versions, with some exceptions here and there, I think with PC. But overall, it's got all the different expansions and all the different things that you would expect from those platforms for you to play with your friends. So, Warframe makes the number six on the list. All right, guys, we are in the top five. And at number five, Pokin Tournament DX. Very surprising maybe to some of you guys, but at one point, guys, I was a Pokin Tournament fiend. I still think to this point, to this day, Pokin Tournament is an underrated gem. For online multiplayer, it was cool because it took kind of like a light Tekken system. You had different ranks and you had promotion matches. So anytime that you're getting close to get a rank up or promotion, it would tell you, hey, promotion match, or you can demote someone if they lost. So it was a little bit extra added pressure in there from a multiplayer component. You still got the local multiplayer, but the cool thing with the DX version of the game is they actually added new modes, three on three battles. Locally, if you're playing with someone, it's fantastic. It's so fun to play the different modes that they added in with the three on three and the different Pokemon as well, because the local multiplayer was really weird originally on the Wii U, kind of like how they did it with the gamepad and everything. It was kind of weird, but on the Nintendo Switch, it's normalized at this point. So everything is really set up well with the online multiplayer. No rollback netcode, but that's honestly all I want for Pokemon Tournament. If they were to just say, hey, look, there is rollback netcode on Nintendo Switch 2 that's coming. We're going to just remake the game and rollback netcode. I swear to you guys, I would still be playing this game to this day. That's like the only thing. But I still, years after launch, would go back. We'd play it with the community. I'd play some online matches with Lucario. It's still super fun and one of the best multiplayer experiences, local plus online, on the Nintendo Switch. Number four, Monster Hunter Rise. This game could be number one, guys. When it gets to the top five, or at least top four or so, a lot of these games can be anywhere because the multiplayer experiences that are in Monster Hunter Rise and in a lot of these games are pretty much the best that the Nintendo Switch has to offer. Full suite of options when it comes to multiplayer gameplay. You have everything that you potentially need in Monster Hunter. It's actually the first game to use the new Nintendo Switch NPLN servers netcode. And you can tell because it runs like a dream. There isn't a lot of lag. There aren't really issues. You've got a ton of features in this game for multiplayer. Everything seems so seamless when it comes to dropping in, going into like your village, talking, trading, doing whatever you need to do in order to get ready for that next big battle when you go out. Looking at the different ranking systems in terms of what to hunt next. Everything set up that it's so cohesive, not only in the single player campaign, but also seamlessly going into multiplayer. So if you want to tackle a challenge with someone, it's not a hassle to get to the multiplayer than to go into some place and say, okay, here's this. Everything seems so seamless like with their code system and how they get everything done. I was really surprised at how good it was. Monster Hunter Rise is a phenomenal multiplayer experience, easily one of the best, super smooth, uses the NPLN system that Nintendo has, the new one, and I think that Capcom really, really did a great job with this game, with Monster Hunter Rise, and then of course, it's expansion, the Sunbreak expansion, which just takes the great online multiplayer that they already had, has a bunch of cool updates to other things that they added into it to make it even better. So between Monster Hunter Rise, when I was playing that a lot, and the Sunrise expansion, this is easily one of the best. And honestly, guys, if you had it over and above any of these other games that I'm talking about here, I wouldn't be mad at you. I would not blame you at all. Coming in at number three, we've got a two pack, Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 3. So I've played a lot more Splatoon 2 than I have Splatoon 3, but Splatoon 3 is definitely better than Splatoon 2 when it comes to what it offers in the multiplayer component. It offers a lot more options when it comes to grouping up with your friends and playing online multiplayer. I think that that was the big issue with Nintendo and what they are doing with Splatoon. There were so many features and so many things when it comes to inviting your friends, starting up the matches, grouping up together, different play. That just was a problem. But Splatoon 3 fixed a lot of that. Now, even with Splatoon 2, I still had a ton of fun. It fixed a lot of stuff with Splatoon 1. And I put hundreds of hours into Splatoon 2. And I've definitely put a good amount of hours into Splatoon 3. And it still offers some of the best, if not the best, 
shooter suite of options when it comes to multiplayer. I don't think there's another shooter multiplayer game on the Nintendo Switch that can touch Splatoon 2 or Splatoon 3 with its options. You have the different Splatfests, which are phenomenal just for online, right? For people voting, for people going in there and battling, all the different things and events that they set up for people to play. You have the Salmon Run mode, which is like the Horde mode for Gears of War, but it's Splatoon, and that was great in Splatoon 2, and it's awesome and improved in Splatoon 3. So Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 3 just offer some of the best multiplayer experiences. You have a bunch of different ranking systems. You have your unranked. You have different game modes. There's so much stuff that it does, and it continuously updates and adds new things and balances the game and just has a great community of people that just play the game. If you want to learn about the game, if you want to learn different tactics, or moves or what the best combinations are there's so much in there for you to kind of dive into and get engrossed in the community of splatoon so that's why it's number three on my list number two super smash brothers ultimate now the only thing that's holding back super smash brothers ultimate from being number one is the online play if the online play was rollback if the online play was better then this would absolutely be the number one game and i'd still be playing this game to this day online now local whenever i get a chance to play i will absolutely play it because the local multiplayer exactly why multiplayer can be magical super smash brothers brings out some of the funnest moments in local multiplayer it's super smooth it's got tons of options oh my goodness all the different stuff that they added in with the squad strike and different things that you can do the local multiplayer in super smash brothers ultimate is the best that they've had ever the stage morphing there's just so many cool things that they've added in to the local experience of super smash brothers ultimate that makes it a phenomenal multiplayer game and a must buy game for families must buy game for people that are into nintendo characters it's just great the online is the only thing lacking it doesn't have all the cool squad strike and stage morphing and dope stuff that they added in in the online now the online is still leagues better than what they had before in terms of the arenas and getting people into play and how it actually works and the tournaments it's still better than super smash brothers for wii u and nintendo 3ds but it's just not quite up to where i would like it to be but still overall out of all the different games i'm pretty sure super smash brothers ultimate is my most played game when it comes to multiplayer. But even with all of that, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is still one of my most played multiplayer games in a game. If they announced new character DLC for the game tomorrow, I'd be right back online playing with all the community and playing online trying to get to Elite Smash because I pretty much got every character to Elite Smash. So I played a ton of this game. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, still one of the best local multiplayer experiences, one of the greatest multiplayer games of all time doesn't matter which system you're talking about here and coming in at number one the eternal mario kart 8 deluxe yes this is the best multiplayer experience on the nintendo switch and i know it's a wii u game i know we need to move on i know people keep buying it but this game is being bought for a reason it's phenomenal all the different extra added in dlc all the updates they've done to be able to play much more comfortably local. I still play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with the community to this day. Out of a lot of these games here, a lot of them I don't play anymore in terms of the multiplayer experience, but Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the game that I still play with the community here on a somewhat regular basis that we just played not too long ago because it is that good. All the new stages that they added in with the content. The online multiplayer has been improved greatly to be able to customize your items finally to where you don't need to have blue shells if you're playing with your friends or you can customize it completely the way that they pick the tracks the selection the tournaments that they have on there there's such a good suite of options for people to be able to play multiplayer they have competitive modes they have unranked everything's in there and that's why millions upon millions of people continue flocking to mario kart 8 deluxe there's nothing else on the market like it there is no other kart racer that does what it does with its presentation with the anti-gravity with the features and options there's other racers that have different type of things that are maybe even more in depth in some ways but combining everything in terms of the roster when it comes to the options when it comes to the different gameplay styles obviously what they do mario kart is just one in its own and that's why people still play it and love it the controls 
are phenomenal. The gameplay is just as good as ever, actually better than what it was on Mile Kart 8 with the different tweaks that they've done because they've done a lot of updates and tweaks and adjustments and they added two items. So to me, the multiplayer experience, whether you're playing local with family and friends, which I still play local, I have a little nephew, I got him Mario Kart 8 and a Switch Lite, and we play local multiplayer, or you're playing online with your friends, it's a great experience all around. For the most part, it runs super smooth. It's a great multiplayer experience. It's still really good. I enjoy it quite a bit, and that's why it's the number one multiplayer experience on the Nintendo Switch. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the top 25 best Nintendo Switch multiplayer games. Let me know what your favorite multiplayer games are in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell, and check out my other top 25 best lists right here on screen. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.